Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have a 2,000 kilogram car driving up a 6% grade at 60 miles per hour, which is about 26, almost 27 meters per second, which is about 94 or so kilometers per hour. So the question then is, what is the power required of the engine in that car to get the car to move at 60 miles per hour. And in our first case, we're going to ignore wind resistance, friction, and engine efficiency. Simply ignoring all that, what is the power required? How do we do that? Well, we start out with the basic definition of power. We can say that power is equal to the work done in a certain amount of time. So in this case, the work done driving up, well, what we can do here is we could say, um, well, the work done, by definition, that would be equal to force times distance. Force times distance divided by time. Or, another way to think about it is as follows. We can say, well, power, which is equal to work divided by time, is also the change in energy divided by time. And in this case, the change in energy, since kinetic energy isn't changing, the, the, the velocity is constant, there's a change in potential energy because we're gaining height. So in this case, we can say it's the change in potential energy divided by time. Now, continuing that concept, we can say that power is equal to, what's the definition of potential energy? It is mgh. So it would be the change in mgh over Let's, let's call it the change in time, the amount of time that has passed. And since m and g don't change, we can say this is equal to mg times the change in the height divided by the change in the time. Now the change in the height divided by the change in the time is the rate at which the car gains height. Hmm. So how do we figure that out? Well, what we can do here is we can say that there's a relationship between height gained and the speed of the car. We can say that the sine of the angle theta, by definition, is equal to the height, or the opposite side, which is opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse. And so what we can then do is, we can say that the hypotenuse is equal to the opposite side, divided by the sine of theta which means that the change in the hypotenuse is therefore proportional to the change in the opposite side. So we can say that the change in the hypotenuse is equal to the change in the, in the opposite side divided by the sine of theta. And if I now divide both sides by delta t, I can then say that the change in the hypotenuse as a function, or divided by delta t, not as a function, but divided by delta t, is equal to the change in the opposite side divided by delta t times 1 over the sine of theta. Now notice, the change in the hypotenuse over time, that is the speed of the car, that is the velocity of the car. And the change in the opposite side over delta t, that's the change in delta h delta t. So that would be delta h divided by delta t. And then we multiply that times 1 over the sine of theta. And finally we can see that delta h delta t is equal to the velocity of the car times the sine of theta. So let's go over here. So we can say that delta h delta t is therefore equal to the velocity of the car times the sine of theta. So coming back over here, we can say that the power required for the car to drive up the incline, 6% 6 grade, at 60 miles per hour, is going to be equal to mg times delta h delta t, which is v times the sine of theta. And that will be the power required for the car to drive up the incline. Again, ignoring wind resistance, friction, and engine efficiency. So the power is equal to the mass, 2,000 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, times the velocity, 26.817 meters per second, times the sine of 3.43363 degrees. We're probably exaggerating a little bit with those decimal places, but that's quite all right. So we'll take 3.43363, take the sine of that, Multiply that times 26.817 times 9.8 
times 2,000 equals, and that gives us the power acquired being equal to 31,480 watts, because that's how we express power. Now, if we want to convert that to horsepower, we would multiply that times one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So let's divide that by 746, which gives us 42.2 horsepower. So that's the amount of horsepower, the amount of power we require to take a 2,000 kilogram car, it's a little over 4,000 pounds, and drive it up a 60% grade at freeway speeds. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, and that's because we're ignoring some of the other things that we should take into account. But purely to gain that potential energy at that speed, that's the horsepower required. In the next videos, we'll start including some of these other things to see how that changes the power requirement of a car like that. And that's how it's done.